All right, welcome back to Adobe Live, live from Adobe Max 2017. And for the next 30, 40 minutes, I'm going to be with my two esteemed guests, Dan Mumford. Hello. Dan, the man Mumford. <laughs> and Robert Jenneret III, AKA Rob Rob Zilla. Zilla. Yeah. And they're both incredibly talented illustrators. And one of the, one of the things that, uh, that, that, you know, that, that's similar in, in them is that they use the same tool. They use Adobe uh, mobile applications on an iPad to create their illustrations. So let's dive right into it because we have very little time. Uh, let's start with you, Robzilla. Uh, just a quick overview of what your style is, what you do, where people can find you. Um, you know, well, um, talk about yourself. Talk about myself. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like, okay. Well, let's I'm move a, on to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a vector artist. Um, I use mainly iPad, like 95 percent. Um, Award-winning. I've done work with several professional sports teams, um, and all for my iPad. Mm -hmm. But my real life, I'm a teacher. So uh, yep. this is my Superman moment right now. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the Live. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And it's not the first time. Nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm an old timer on this one. All right. And me? Yeah. Uh, Dan Mumford, illustrator. Uh, mainly work in Photoshop and on the iPad. And I do a lot of stuff for the pop culture scene, so lots of movies, video games, that sort of thing, some music stuff as well. Lots of colors, mm -hmm. uh, lots of detail. Yeah. That's pretty cool. much me. Yeah. Awesome. Let's, let's, let's show us some stuff. Right, who are we looking at? Uh, let's let's talk, let's start with with you, Dan. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is my website, dan-mumford.com, and this has all of my work. As you can see, loads of color, loads of detail. That's pretty much what I like doing. Um, just a few closer examples. Um, got this one for Star Wars. Just loads of color. Loads of color going on. That's pretty much me. This one, probably my favorite piece I've ever done. For He-Man, uh, that is my favorite thing I've ever worked on. I have the power. Yeah, I, what a fun piece that was. Um, yeah, that's a brief overview of me. Mm -hmm. I think. So I guess Rob. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pop up pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Not yet though. Like, okay. Hold on for a second. I gotta pop oh, a little bit. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's awesome. I, I, what I really love about your illustrations, Dan, is like the intricacy of them and the depth. Yeah, I try, and, I try and go really intricate with yeah. the work. <laughs> uh, a little bit too much sometimes, yeah. to the point where it gives you a bit of a headache and uh -huh. zooming in really far. I mean, that's and, the thing. I'm always zoomed in really close. And you do things that people won't see anyway. Exactly. So oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. put loads of tiny details in there that are ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, like, man. But I like that. I want people to like, uh -huh. And if I'm working on something that people, there are a lot of fans for it, mm -hmm. I want them to sort of delve in there and find mm -hmm. those little details and stuff. All right. It's good. Rob, that's your Instagram account? Yeah, um, I mainly use Instagram. So it's of... Robzilla E! <laughs> <laughs> Robzilla I, I, I. I'm the third. Um, so, on here, what I like to do is I like to use like a triptych style, break everything up into threes since I'm the third. And, um, if you follow me, yeah. then you're sure to get recent updates on anything that I'm working on that I'm allowed to show. So, just a couple of examples that I have here. Um, most of the clients on this page is myself, so. The best client. Yeah, the best client in the world. Best client. A little bit of soccer there, and look at that built chest of mine right there. <laughs> but, yeah, a lot of stuff there want to check me out that's where you find me that's awesome all right so you guys are going to be working on stuff yeah a little bit yeah because some for the amount of time we we're have we're going to be playing with yeah, yeah. so yeah. let's start with you rob okay so okay ah, and you have some some I have some sneaks some sneaks for us yeah, i have as some well. sneaks yeah. to show. Should I start do you sneaks? have sneaks i don't have any sneaks you don't have any sneaks no. all right, all right cool. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the sneak okay you know what i'll do it last Let's do the sneaks. Let's start with you, Dan. What do you want me to yeah, do? Because you don't have any sneaks. So. Oh, well, I, basically, <laughs> today I'm going to be working on this little skull here. I'm just going to be adding some little extra details to this. Okay. We haven't got a lot of time, so hence why we're starting with something mm -hmm. kind of finished. And uh, yeah, I'm using Adobe Draw. 
uh, which is the vector-based app, uh, and I just really love drawing in it because it's just really smooth and you get this really nice sort of uh, line work with it that is kind of pretty much what I do with most of my work. Um, so as you can see, I've gone fairly intricate with this, doing some work on this. Just line work with uh, some colored layers below it. And yeah, I am just gonna get in here and start doing a little bit of stuff. So while, you do, while you're continue drawing, I'm just gonna continue talking with you. Yeah, just talk, <laughs> just talk at us. Um, so what would you say? Is, do you choose the iPad for a certain style or do you prefer working with the Wacom tablet? Do um, you continue designing? So, well, for me, it's <laughs> two, two things. Uh, for me, it's kind of like I, I, I like working with the iPad when I'm uh, away from the studio. Mm -hmm. It's really good for that because, you know, I, I've done a lot of work before on the plane, essentially, mm -hmm. you know, on the way over when you've got a long trip, something like that. Um, or if I want to work at home, because I don't have much of a studio set up at home. So I do most of my work in the studio during the day. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just sort of, it works for both of those different um, and Do different you find yourself starting stuff on the iPad and continuing yeah. in Photoshop? Or? Oh yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you can just, um, there's this little tab up here where you can just export to the Adobe uh, apps. Uh -huh. And that just takes everything straight over. You can, if you want to take it into Illustrator, it yeah. keeps all the vectors and everything. Maybe straight. you can just show that shortcut very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Like how the, to send to. Up there. This is so cool because you can just start on there. the iPad and then uh, and then very simply sent to Illustrator or yeah. Photoshop. And, if, and then you, this is it, and then you just tap one of those. And if you're logged in already, mm -hmm. uh, then it automatically knows to send it to that one. Yeah. It's even done it when I've been at home, sent it, and it'll send it to the studio, and it's there and in the And open morning. Illustrator yeah, in the instantly. studio, and people will so, go, oh, what's yeah. happening? So, it, you know, it's, re it's really... It's Dan Mumford's <laughs> ghost. Yeah. It's really intuitive, <laughs> you know. It works really well. The ghost of Mumford. Yeah. It's the ghost of Mumford, that's what it is. Um, See, so yeah, I, l I love working with it, you know, working with the two formats. It's a really nice thing. Okay. I'm going to get in here. Start doing some rough line work. I they're, think. Saying, they're saying the host is trying to sell it so hard. <laughs> Not really. I mean, <laughs> there is nothing to sell there, really. I mean, it's just so cool. It's the best crowd ever in it, though. We're going to sell it right now. Yeah, we're going to sell it today. Yeah. We're just drawing. Pretty much. All right, so you continue to work on your skull. Let's move to uh, Rob Zilla. Yeah, so um, last year, since we're short on time, I did a drawing of Dan, myself, and all the Make It On Mobile. I think it was 16 illustrations in all. So Make It On Mobile, what is that for people who don't know? Um, Make It On Mobile is a special event um, in conjunction with Adobe and Apple. And what we do is we basically get creatives together, many of them novice as far as the iPad is concerned, and they'll bring us together in one place and we have two days to just create some wonderful artwork and collaborate with each other using um, the hardware by Apple and of course the software by Adobe. And I just, I think Dan still had some hair there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, concealed. Got it concealed yeah. under the cap. I should have worn my cap today, no yeah. one would have known. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm just using the import feature from, I'm bringing in illustrations that I've done before into this current drawing environment. Okay. And I can embellish them a little bit later. So since Dan is working with a skull, I want to kind of like play off the, the Day of the Dead. Yeah. And just decorate our faces okay. to kind of like coordinate what he's doing. And then if we do have enough time, we'll just bring both of those images together and have something fresh. Everyone's going fresh. nuts for Halloween right yeah, now. Yeah, Ruben. Yeah, you know? I see everything. Real fresh. <laughs> we actually read the chat, and that's the cool thing about Adobe oh, yeah, Live, right, is that right. there is the, um, you know, this interaction with you guys, and I really invite you to ask Rob and uh, Dan questions, if you have any. Anything. Uh, that's what we're here Anything. for. That's why we stream. Oh, P. Michael Quinn. Hello from Web School in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. The students really appreciated being included. Hey. Yeah. We'd like to welcome both of y'all. Mm -hmm. That's that's really awesome. I know I know some schools are actually watching this live. 
Yeah, with amazing. their students. That's yeah, great. generally when I'm not on, mm -hmm. I'm watching it with my kids. I have it on a big screen and we're okay. working. Do your kids ever get bored with it and say, come on, <laughs> why do we have to watch Adobe Live today? <laughs> they'll, they'll get bored anyway. Right? <laughs> like, it's, it's rough as a teacher, but yeah, we have some good times here. Brand is asking, Rob, did you use the app uh, like, oh, like to pix, pixelate for your Instagram, like to get the three images, or do you do that by hand? Um, I actually use Adobe Comp. There you go. Yeah, so I created a template where I can create the triptych um, by basically feeding the, the, the images into mm -hmm. a RA preset. Template. Okay. So on three different pages, and then you export them as three different images? One long image with okay. a square in the middle. Ah. And I export it as one image. Okay. In Instagram, they have it set for a square, so okay. I'll pull over all the way to oh, the okay. right hand so side. Three steps, okay. So I get three That's images out of one image. Yep. That way I won't fill up my camera roll as much either. So right now, Kajak, yeah, you know? they're working on iPads using the Apple Pencil. And believe it or not, this thing has blend mode, so. Yeah, <laughs> just like Photoshop. Just like it. Or Illustrator. Right now, it's not obeying the roster. Oh, Giovanni Duenya is asking, uh, what, you, what would you call your style, Rob? Is there? Is there, um, is there you know, this is actually a style, like both, you know, both for Dan and you and um, uh, Brian Yap. It's like something that almost a style that came with with the iPad and the these draw applications because it gives this. What what do you think? I know what this. This is something that I've seen emerging with you know with uh, you know yeah. Adobe Draw before it was Adobe Draw. Um, I mean, Adobe Ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think there's, it's, it's kind of an evolution of the sort of vector style, I think. Okay. Um, ironically, I don't really work with vectors other than when I work in draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the style I work in is that sort of quite clean, clean line work. Yeah. And, uh, but I think that line's blurring quite a bit at the moment, especially with the tools yeah. that we're now able to work with, especially something like draw. Uh -huh. Because it is such a natural thing you're doing when you're drawing with a pencil. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't feel like you're working with vectors, really. Yeah, yeah you know? right. Um, so uh, yeah, it's amazing. It's for really those of you who don't know, of course, the benefit of working with vector art is uh, that it is resolution independent. So basically, yeah. um, uh, uh, Rob can zoom into there and uh, not lose any. Um, only on the vectors. Only on the vectors. Yeah, when I import these in, they yeah. come in as um, PNGs. PNGs. So I'm gonna get a little. So is that a PNG too? Um, this is a PNG here. Um, okay. Is Dan a PNG as well? Dan is a PNG as well, okay. but later on I have the option of bringing those vectors okay. into the final composition. But if I was to take a vector and let's say, let me kick up my suntan a little bit, <laughs> tone it back down, which it didn't tone down the way that I wanted to, because it captured all the browns in there. Disappear, Rob. <laughs> so if I was to zoom into, oh, yeah, two fingers to the side. I want to zoom in there, then we're yeah. gonna get that super crisp, super crispy sun yeah. line that's right there. Like many people hairlines, they wish it's that crispy. <laughs> we're gonna get that in there and it's one of the greatest things ever. So Roxanne is asking, do you usually start your vector art from scratch or uh, you use a photo? Um, it depends on the job, mm. depends on the job. A lot of clients only give you a couple of days to work. Yeah. Um, what I've done is I adapted to using photographs to get the foundation uh -huh. and then jump right back into my drawing style. So okay. I'll cut out a big chunk of trying to get this and that in the right place and then just dive completely into yeah, yeah, yeah. my style of creating things. So. How about you, Dan? Is that? your skull uh, a photograph? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what? I think it was, it was based on some reference that I had, okay. yeah. And then I just sort of embellish it maybe make it a little bit more menacing in any way I want. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I kind of feel like, you know, there's this weird thing where I think using reference is frowned upon sometimes, but like, yeah, there's well, nothing I mean, wrong with why it. Why not? Like, yeah. refer reference is there, you know, as long as you're making something original with that reference, I think that's, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And the crazy thing is, when we do that on the iPad, like, we, we're subject to being judged, but folks who use Illustrator, 
they'll do it, and uh -huh. it's wonderful. You get what I mean? <laughs> Nothing against illustrators, folks. I still use Illustrator. I don't. I don't like Illustrator. You don't like Illustrator? I can't do it. No. Man, Illustrator is the best. It smells nice. Uh, it doesn't work for me. Right. One, one day I'm going to try and learn it again, but. <laughs> Do some so Judy is asking, do you feel the iPad Pro with the pen, with the Apple Pencil, is comparable to a Wacom Cintiq? My students are torn between the two. I think they're very different beasts. Very, right? yeah. very yeah. different. It, um, it really depends what you want to do. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think you should just work off of whatever budget that you have, mm -hmm. and also fit your comfort zone. Those two yeah. things are very important. If you're comfortable working a certain way, then you'll go with one. If you're comfortable working a different way, then you'll probably go with the other. Mm -hmm. I know folks who work who use both. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I know I would always say, you know, everyone should always start with one of the little, like, Intuos tablets that you just have there that hook up to your computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that's kind of, it's not the same, because obviously you're not working on the screen, but it, it's a way of you sort of knowing if that is a process that you're going to be able to work with, and the shortcuts and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I get a lot of people asking me the same question, and there is no definitive answer, really. And Greg is asking for both of you, what steps did you guys take to promote yourselves and start selling your art at the beginning? You know, how did you guys build an audience? Well, that's pretty good because we have two different approaches. Oh. Well, my, <laughs> I'm mainly like social media, to be honest with you. Uh, like Instagram, it started out, started out on MySpace. That was where I started out. MySpace? With, that was oh. my original <laughs> social media, you know. I used to get jobs through MySpace. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. But nowadays, and then it was Facebook, not really Facebook now. Even though I've got like nearly 100K people following me, no one really sees it on Facebook now. It's a shame. Instagram's the best one for me because it's the most visual medium, I think. Like people just scrolling, just that one, you know, you just see it and you know if you like yeah. it. And uh, for me, that's the best thing. That and I try and sell a lot of prints and stuff. So just all that sort of works for me. How about you? For me, it's, it's always been social media, I, I still do not have a web page. Yeah, I mean, so, is there any compelling reason why you should? Um, you know, I weighed the options and decided not to pursue one. Yeah. Um, I use this, this pretty neat thing called Adobe Spark page. Uh-huh. Um, so if I have potential clients... <laughs> He's clients, doing the hard sells, not me. <laughs> you know? yeah. But I've been using Spark page since it was um, called Slate. So if I have a client, let's say for soccer, who wants mm -hmm. to see examples of my work in soccer, I'll create a Spark page with just examples of those. Mm -hmm. the, the, the application creates a URL mm -hmm. for that page, and I can send that out to whoever. Yeah. It's responsive. With nice transitions. Yeah. And, yes. Beautiful. So, I think a lot of people nowadays Not Behance? Use Instagram. Says Deborah. Mm -hmm. Not Behance? Oh, I'm on oh, Behance. I'm on it. Of course. Yeah. 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 I'm on Behance. I can't be on it's here unless you're on Behance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and Uriel says, Rob Zilla, thank you for signing my poster yesterday. So I guess Uriel is here in the house. Yes. You owe me a beer later. Okay, is there any way I, is there any way you can get me in today? Huh. <laughs> ah. Uriel. <laughs> you in the area? <laughs> That's a dangerous question to ask, uh -huh. too. Yep. <laughs> Behance is mostly for designers. Well, I would disagree with that. I think yeah. any creative uh, activity, you know, has a place on Behance. I mean, that from photography, motion design, film, illustration, graphic design, packaging. There's a whole there's a whole list of um, uh, you know of, of fields of design that can that 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 you can do on Behance. So it's really cool because uh, on the stream, you see we have the split screen, so we see you guys working. Oh, wow. The skull has, a, has been, <laughs> what is it called? Branded. It's been branded, but Branded yeah. the old way, like with the hot iron. <laughs> things, ended, things ended for this guy terribly. At max, it would seem. Yeah. I'm going to do this really What quick. was the site Rob talked about? We just talked about the site. I don't know. Or oh, if um, Adobe Spark. Ah, Spark. 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 Uh, you can actually see that in your Creative Cloud uh, menu. Mm -hmm. And uh, Spark, and you just can open it on your desktop. The cool thing is you can use your mobile devices too to create your Spark pages or Spark uh, posts, Spark videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a whole bunch of things. And the cool thing, if you're a Creative Cloud member, you can actually brand 
the uh, did you did you brand yours? I branded thing? mine today. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. awesome. You can put your own logo, your own color scheme, your own everything. You can just customize the heck out of that thing. Yeah. So then it's got technical purples. question. What kind yeah. of iPads? Are yours, the iPad Pro, the big version, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know what? The big version. I think you know. I taught graphic design for over 10 years, and uh, I always thought that you know when students came in with small pieces of paper to do their sketches on, I would always send them away and say, "No, come back with a big piece of paper," because the smaller the piece of paper or the smaller the iPad, the smaller the ideas. That's a nice way of saying it. What do you yeah. think? Huh? Yeah. Actually, when, when I was at university, they always wanted us to get really big pieces of paper. Yeah, it's beautiful because like it can just, really, yeah. you know, yeah. And that, that was always really good because then you'd, even if you then took it down to a smaller uh -huh. scale, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, it, it meant that you really got to see the composition. And exactly. The way it breathed mm -hmm. on the page and stuff, you know. Uh, so yeah, yeah, big's always good as so a So the cool point. thing about the iPad Pro is that, you know, it not only supports the Apple Pencil, of course, but, um, but it's almost the size of an A4 for those of you who are in Europe. <laughs> I don't know that. Uh, what does that mean? It's, it's slightly bigger that than a, what does that mean? slightly big, bigger than the letter size paper. Yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah. What does that mean? Oops. Hey, yeah, Greg says I use Instagram, Behance, Twitter sometimes. Oh, it's so tough with so many amazing creatives out there. Well, you know, everybody's got a space. Yeah, I would say they do. You just got to find that one unique thing that makes, you know, makes you stand out somehow. Exactly. Hi, uh, yeah. Giovanni says, oh, maybe they need to rebrand the next iteration of the iPad to the iPad A4. <laughs> yeah, that would work for me. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, it's getting wicked, man. <laughs> it's getting a little wicked. We're having to work quickly today. Yeah. What are you doing? Are you doing like a... Doing a Day of the Dead. Like a... Dan of the Dead. Dan, Dan of, of the Dead. Dan of the Dead. Oh, the, the, ghost, the, of, dead. the ghost of Mumford. Yes. <laughs> Very nice for Halloween, that's right, Thomas. Yeah, that's what we're thinking. <laughs> yeah, we read our minds. Yep. I mean, it's still, what, 10 days away, but... I don't know. It's, what, it's when is I mean, Halloween? I think as of the 1st of October, America was celebrating Halloween. Yeah, it's creeping up, steadily. Yeah. In England, it'll just be maybe an evening of people in costumes. Maybe. And people want your swatches. You guys prefer standing or sitting when you're working? I need oh. to stand, man. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I sit. I need yeah. to reduce. I have one of those desks that I can choose. You know, yeah, like... no, I do too, but I always just sit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I occasionally make it go up like maybe an inch. <laughs> okay, just so that you're just like... Just up a little bit higher. But it's one of the, I am having to be really careful like these days. Like 10, 10 years of pretty much drawing all the time takes its toll on the back a bit, you know. So do you work standing up all the time? Well, teaching, but anytime I get a chance to sit down, I'm going to take that squat <laughs> over standing up. Um, but this is pretty good. It's a, it's a good change. Yeah. My legs right now are like, what are you doing? <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Yeah, I think when you're standing, there's uh -huh. a there's a whole there's so much more energy that comes into whatever you're doing, whether you're on a phone call or when you're drawing, when you're, it's just it's a freer movement than sitting, I guess. Except for Dan, yeah. not for me, no. not for me. <laughs> I, my my day by the end of the day, I'm always just like this over the screen. It's not it's not it's not good.
So I think we have about five more minutes, guys. Oh, sneaks. Have... oh, sneaks. Oh, of course. All right. All right. Sneak time. All right. So drum rolls. Yeah. Type the word drum roll inside yeah. of the chat. Drum right roll now. in the chat. Drum We're waiting. Roll. Don't do all caps. We don't want to, we don't want to flag you. So you, you're moving to a magic version of? We're moving to a magic pre-release version. This version will be out actually next Thursday, as a matter of fact. All right. But there's some cool new things that this does now that we have it here. Um, one of the cool new things that you're going to realize once you get into it is that they've added a few extra features. So there go my layers, um, my layers menu right there little cool thing here called transform all layers so now I have the option of doing a uniform transform as soon as they'll work with my finger I can do a uniform resize Excuse me. like that, that. Is pretty neat that's pretty neat yeah. um, all of your requests have been granted because now not only can I do uniform I can also do ununiform Squishing the dog. I can squish things up now. Um, it just became a pit bull. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually abuse now it's right, right now on this dog. Yeah, let's um, stop abusing the dog. Yeah, um, another thing that can happen, um, let's say if I wanted my, as soon as I can find it. Oops, there we go. Let's go over to my background image right there. And what I'm able to do now is I'm able to come in here now I can select a certain color here, and I can take that color, it's a sneak, therefore, it's a sneak, yeah, yeah it's like it's giving yeah. me some buggy, but it, it, we have it now where you can recolor a whole entire layer. Wow. Um, not only can you do all layers. Try it like, again. That's really, try it that's again. really good. Yeah. I asked for it, and I think it. I got it all wrong. Okay. But it's, it's there, folks. Yeah. Um, recolor, so everything that's on a layer, it just recolors it. Recolors that, that whole entire layer. That's really important for me, because yeah. so many times I've done something and I'm like, I want it a slightly different shade. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it keeps us from having to wait to go into yeah. our desktop application in Where order to do, do it. Where I would do color overlay or something. Yeah. yeah. No, it's great, though. Um, you can do transform, the squishy transform and everything else to just one layer if you want to now. Um, so I can just take that one layer, I can squish it up if I wanted to to get a tighter. Yeah, you can abuse the layer, but just don't abuse the dog. Yeah, don't <laughs> abuse the dog. Humane society and everything. No. Um, there's a couple of more things. Um, how much time do we have? Oh, uh, you have you have a list? Oh <laughs> yes, I have a list. Here go the here go the cool thing right here. All right. You wanted this, now you have it. So I'm gonna take two fingers, I'm gonna press here until I get the arrows to pop up. I'm gonna try it again. And now, uh, pop up again. Now uh, I can rotate the canvas according to how I want to use it now. So you ask for it, it's there. So it's not rotating the image, it's just rotating the canvas. Ro rotating the canvas. So some people, they, they wanted this and you got it now. Oh, and have it in there. What is this percentage here? Oh, that's the... That's the percentage of oh, the zoom yeah, that yeah, we have okay. there. So now and if can I want to... Just, can, you, can you click back to... Uh, can you... Okay, rotate it. Rotate it. Okay, let it go. Okay, can you go back to normal? Oh, you have to do it... You have to rotate it. All oh, right. It'll, it'll automatically lock at every oh, okay. 15%. Um, another thing that we can do now is that we can... Um, you can organize all of your projects based on date. Um, name so you can always have what you want at the top and you don't have to shift through like I was doing earlier to find certain projects so mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of cool things coming next Thursday so be on the lookout for that make mm -hmm. sure you download it yeah it's fresh so Lizzie Skipper thank you does this come with Creative Cloud uh, the apps are actually free. <laughs> free yeah, yeah. yeah. The apps are free. The thing is, if you're a Creative Cloud member, you can sync with your Creative Cloud libraries. You can move your illustrations directly to Photoshop and Illustrator. Uh, that, of course, is the benefit of being a Creative Cloud member. But you can try these out for, for free. Yeah. All right, guys. We have very little time left. All right. 
I'm done with my skull, I think. Yeah, now. in Illustrator Draw, you can work with layers. Yes, Laura. Loads of layers. Yeah, you can. So guys, just a quick few words. Uh, how many times have you been at Max? This is my third. Third? Yep. That, yeah, like that. Like Robert the, generated Robert the third. third. Yep. It's my second. Okay. Second time. Yeah. Dan, the second mumper. Okay. I like that. We should do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So how, what do you think about this 2017 Max? Oh, it's been great. It's yeah. been yeah, great, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything is centrally located. And you, you know, you can't be so bigger. Easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, big, it's bigger. Yeah, it's bigger. It's bigger this time. I think we went up a thousand in the crowd number. Uh -huh. Yeah, last yeah year, right. So. It's like, what, 13,000 people here? Oh, this we went year? up two then. Yeah. yeah. I think it's 13,000. Yeah, it's it's incredible. incredible. Yes, Adobe Max 2017, Adobe Live. We're going to do a hot switch here. Uh, Michael Chase is going to be up in a second. You guys have to run. unplug and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and run off the stage with me because. Uh, <laughs> Stay look, just stay here on the channel. Michael will be here with uh, an incredible guest in just a few seconds. So see you later. Don't Bye. go. Bye. Shout out to Elevation Lab. <laughs>
I travel a lot. Cambodia? Uh, Cambodia was several years ago. Okay. Um, They're asking, have you been to Portugal? I have not, but I really want to go. It's the next, next report yes. live. Live yeah. from Portugal. Okay. I really love Portugal, Peru. It's not, you have an awesome country. I'm a big fan of uh, Lisboa. Oh, I'd love there. to go there. It to looks incredible. Um, okay, yeah. so you want to deep dive into some projects? Sure. Uh, you're telling me that you're also working on a, on a movie? Yes. So, uh, and uh, the theme of the movie is also a theme that you cover in uh, a lot of, of your pictures, photography yes. work. So you want to talk about it? Yeah, so um, throughout my work, um, when I was first getting started, I focused a lot on aesthetic, how to document a scene, um, and uh, the technical aspects of photography, but more recently, I'm really focused in how I can expand a narrative in my work and um, tell stories that can create change and create awareness to different issues happening in the world. Um, so most recently, I started working on a feature documentary called After Antarctica. Um, it's currently in production, and it's about the first and last complete crossing of Antarctica by dog sled. Um, so at the core of this film is polar explorer Will Steger, and um, in 1989 he led the first and last complete crossing of Antarctica by dog sled. Oh. And the reason that it was the last expedition of its kind is because since the expedition happened, um, the three ice shelves that they crossed broke off due to climate change. Um, so with our film, we're working with hundreds of hours of never before seen archival footage. Um, but we're also um, planning an expedition to return to Antarctica and document the same coordinates but by boat because now the land that they crossed and the ice that they crossed is, is open ocean. Uh, Pedro um, is saying uh, your website is amazing and uh, what, camera, what camera do you use? What type of equipment? So for I, your pictures and um, for your movies? Yeah, so I, I use many different cameras but um, primarily I use Canon. Um, I really like to use the Canon 5D Mark III um, and, uh, I, and then for filmmaking I really like the Canon uh, 300 Mark II. Okay. Um, and, and so with this project, I can play a teaser from the film. Yeah. Um, I will check something first. Sure. Maybe we can uh, just go on our faces and then we check the audio settings just to make sure it's uh, to come out so our friends can uh, hear what we are doing. Yeah. This will work. Okay. So they will be able to hear. Okay. Great. Should we go full screen? Yes. Ready, Andrew? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it was oh, a very short I have it, it was very short. <laughs> so I have it downloaded, which might work better. Um, okay. Here, let's pull that up. Okay, we'll try again. Uh, full screen. Uh, okay. And play. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Oh, wait, I didn't do it. So was it the first uh, documentary, like back in the days, the first expedition? Um, so, so this is a clip from their expedition. They shot everything on 16 uh, millimeter the at the time. The first 25 years was before the changes. In the last 25 years, so and And this is footage um, from Will Steger's I'll homestead, which is actually from, in northern Minnesota. Last. Last. You can't do the expeditions. I did. The routes don't exist anymore. 1990, the main tipping point was really when we reached the level in which ice on the planet started. This must be very impressive. We knew about it's climate change, but we needed the money and the investment of Antarctica to go into science rather than going into exploration for minerals. And we decided we would form an international team of six people from six countries and cross Antarctica and draw world attention to Antarctica. It was a major, actually, diplomatic feat. We ended up getting the Soviet Union. This is during the Cold War. We got China on board, Japan, France, Great Britain. Everyone felt that it was part of history. It was bigger than ourselves. The one country that did not cooperate was the United States. 
they did everything in their power at that time to stop our expedition. Cocktail parties and fundraising activities are all over now, and they're ready for the longest dog sled ride in history. 4,000 miles over seven months. This exact coordinate is now open. We landed on Antarctica. Um, this is where they started, and this entire area has disintegrated. Well, the interior of the continent is an extremely hostile place. It rejected us like a germ. Uh, yeah, that's a roger. There's a lot of crevasses and they're all hidden. And they're very deep. The crevasses, they frighten me. They are nasty. We pretend that they don't worry us. <laughs> we had 60 days of horrible storms. Unbelievable. 55 below and 100 mile an hour wind. The dogs were starting to freeze to death and we were almost out of food. We could have just disappeared. Three or 400 miles of the route is no longer ice, it's open ocean. Every ice shelf I've traveled on is disintegrated. And this all happened within the last 15 years. A place like Antarctica is so foreign and so remote, but yet melting of that ice affects the rest of the world. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. This is very awesome. Thank so we you. had a lot of questions during the teaser. A lot of people get excited and they want yes. to know when this will be available, how they can get involved in the project. Or... Sure. So um, if you'd like to be involved, you can go to afterantarctica.com and uh, click on our support or our contact page. Um, we're currently in production, so we're still um, raising funding to go back to Antarctica and we're still producing the rest of the story from the present day. Um, so if you'd love to be involved, please reach out. We'd love to have help. Um, yeah, uh, we had questions also about, uh, what was it about? To say, Tasha, you're the boss. <laughs> Uh, what we're saying. Great storytelling. Yeah, a Thank lot of you. very positive. Yeah, th this film looks awesome. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. for your feedback. Uh, oh, yeah, and someone was asking who is your biggest inspiration? Oh, that's a great question. Um, it's also a hard question because I have so many inspirations all of the time. Um, but I would say this year, uh, my biggest inspiration is Will Steger, who's the subject of this film. Yeah. Um, he, I've been spending so much time with his story and with him, interviewing him, and it's incredible to see someone who's dedicated so much of their life um, mm. to bringing awareness to climate change, um, and uh, he's done, done so in such an inspiring way. So I'd say Will Steger. And uh, we have uh, Dylan asking, did you use Premiere Pro? Or do you yes. use, or I guess you are so, using it maybe right now um, uh, to edit the movie. Yes, yeah, yeah. so currently we're using Premiere Pro. Um, and when we first started this project, it was uh, just me editing, um, doing preliminary interviews oh. and footage. But now um, I um, am grateful to have an amazing editor on board named oh. Dana Lemon. And so she's working with me on this film and has been using uh, Premiere Pro. Awesome. As well. mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe what we could do once the movie is uh, released, maybe we can invite you with the editor and you can share your oh, process. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. We'd love to. Could yeah. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, by the way, we'll be live every week now, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on behance.net slash live. And we will definitely have uh, streams dedicated to uh, filmmakers and video editing. So that would be great. Great. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Oh, yeah. And, uh, uh, is it a 4K? I mean, how, how did you shoot this one? Um, yeah, so we're shooting, um, well, right now we've been using Area Alexa's um, cameras um, uh, for some of the preliminary footage. We were using Canon C300, um, and, uh, and then we're also using drone uh, DJI Phantom for professional series. Um, and how, then, how do they end, handle the, the cold? Um, so we're the actually battery. in the process of going back to capture with the drone, and I don't know, hopefully well, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to be bringing backups. Yeah, just in I case. guess. Yeah. Lots of batteries, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So should we cover uh, sure. other so, work? Sure. Um, their work is so uh, So, um, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, this is a great story. Yeah. So um, this last year, I went with Adobe uh, for the launch of their premium stock collection to Tahiti. 
and uh, we went to Chiapu, which is um, a small uh, community in Tahiti that's known to have one of the most dangerous waves in the world. Um, so I can walk you through some of those photographs. Um, and you'll see in my work that um, uh, water, the ocean, and coastal communities are a large focus of my most recent work. Um, and also when I am uh, documenting communities or telling stories about climate change, I'm really interested in the human focus. Okay. And um, yeah, so I'll walk through some of these. And is this, the, is this one of the series available on Adobe Stock? Um, some of these images are available wow. on Adobe Stock. So you um, can license some of these pictures yes. if you go on stock.adobe.com because Tasha is a contributor mm -hmm. uh, to Adobe Stock. Mm -hmm. Are you part of the premium collection? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she's in the high-end section <laughs> of uh, beautiful and professional pictures. Uh, because there is the classic catalog with uh, I don't know, like uh, maybe 50 million of pictures mm -hmm. and there is a premium collection where you can license like this type of uh, pictures, very professional, but also a lot of uh, storytelling uh, behind uh, each picture. <laughs> this kid is awesome. It's so cute. <laughs> nice. So how long was the um, shooting? Like, so how, how many days did you spend? We were, we were in Tahiti uh, for about two weeks. Two weeks. And yeah. uh, Benjamin is asking, how did you shoot the photo of the wave? With oh, the of the wave. Um, so for that one, we were in a boat, okay. um, and uh, there are uh, boats in the community that can take you right out onto the um, tip of the wave. Um, so, so yeah, we were primarily in boats. Nice. And we will do something fun during this show. Tasha and I, we will try for the first time live <laughs> the new Lightroom CC and see uh, if we can retouch one of these pictures. They are already good, but just for the exercise. And see how we can handle the new Lightroom CC. So it will be a first for both of us. Yes. So Which we have we... just installed it like five minutes ago. <laughs> Want to try now? Yeah, let's try. Okay, let's try now. Okay, okay so we can go on the Creative Cloud icon. Oh, and oh, okay. Can we try it? No, I guess because we're offline, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, so now there are two Lightrooms. Mm -hmm. So the desktop one is now called Adobe Lightroom uh, Classic, the classic version with the desktop workflow. Uh, and the new Lightroom CC is with a cloud-based workflow. It's supposed to be very easy to use, okay? So we already okay. imported one picture, and now we'll try to understand what we can do. So this is the photo panel. This is what I understood. Uh, so, oh, like Lightroom, you can write your pictures. This is the five star. Awesome. And uh, here, yeah, this is the editing part. Oh, nice. Uh, so, auto, yeah, it's trying to, mm -hmm. to make it flat, but then you can go in each parameter. Maybe you can try to do something. Something very flat, very dreamy. Mm -hmm. Right, do something dreamy. Okay, and then you have the color panel. Oh, so this is really like, like the classic tools that we have in uh, Natrons. Is it a bit cold? Okay, the tint, vibrance, let's see. Okay, yeah, very easy to use. Effects. Oh, this is a good example. Okay. So clarity, just to bring some texture in the mm -hmm. sea, and uh, vignettes. So this is something you will discover in the new uh, Lightroom CC. With vignettes, I'm directly adding vignettes, but maybe you want to have more control. Mm -hmm. So this is when you can click on this, mm -hmm. and you have more control. Oh, nice. And then you can say, okay, I want to change the feather to make it much, much softer. But uh, I'm not a big fan of vignettes. Although here mm -hmm. it could make sense because we want to focus on, mm -hmm. on this guy. And the sharpening is there. Um, this is uh, to uh, correct uh, the lens uh, optical illusions and upright. So you really have uh, all the tools available. Awesome. And uh, you have a local retouch, uh, healing brush. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like the, how they show you the shortcut oh, too. That's nice. So you can click on B and directly use it. Mm -hmm. The gradient, radial gradient, and then more options. Cool. And then there is this. Oh, you can directly send it to Facebook, so, okay, that's awesome. nice. 
and everything, everything when we go back offline will be synced in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So you can access this new picture and continue the editing on your mobile in the browser. So that's the oh, that's the part of it, yeah, of Lightroom CC. Okay, it looks. Uh, oh, and is it the one where we compare? Oh yeah, that's the before and after. Oh nice. So yeah, but I know Lightroom, so I feel very good about this new UI. Like it's very yeah, easy for I me really to. Yeah, I really like this. Because this is the first time I try it live. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so, what is your editing process? You were telling me that you, when you when you work, like if you take uh, this project that mm -hmm. I really love, uh, you start, you, you try to, to take the right picture. Yeah. From the start, like, yes. and uh, you don't spend too much time on the, on the editing process, right? Yeah, so um, my background and focus is very um, centered around documentary. So I am a firm believer in learning to create the shot in camera as much as possible. Um, so I really try to walk away from every shoot um, feeling that I have the shots in camera as close as possible to how they're going to live out in the world. Um, <laughs> But I do, uh, I, I love to use um, Bridge and Lightroom for organizing my yeah. photographs and... To select the best one. Yes, yeah. so most of the editing I do is in terms of story. So I'll bring in all of my images and then I'll edit the sequence and really think of what shots work best together to tell a story, um, which shots that I can you know, omit or what needs to be included. Um, and that's the main focus of my editing process. But then from there, I shoot entirely in RAW. So then I um, do edit the images to save them out into JPEGs. Amazing. Oh, can you tell us the story about oh, this series? Sure. All right, um, so uh, again, following the theme of communities that are near um, or live on the water, this is uh, photo stories I did on a community called Prekto, okay. which is in Cambodia. Um, and uh, this entire village is built upon the water. So all of the homes, all of the markets, everything takes place on the water. Um, and so this is a primary school. It's one of the only primary schools in that uh, region. And um, the way that the students access the school is by boat. Um, so you'll see small kindergartners um, by themselves taking a boat to get to class. And Pedro um, is asking what people say when you photograph them. Like, you know, like, uh, mm. how do you approach like photographing people? Sure, that's and a great question. Scary, you know? Yeah. So, um, I'm someone who is uh, by nature very shy, and so photography has been a, a good tool for me to mm. push out of that shell. Um, and you know, I've gone up to so many different people throughout the years now uh, to photograph them, and. Very, very few times have I had anyone who wasn't willing to have their photograph taken. Okay. Um, for the most part, people um, you want to share their story and are honored that someone wants to spend the time with them to get to know them and document them. So um, I would say just the more that you practice, uh, the easier it becomes. Um, uh, it's practice. Yeah. yeah, it's practice. It's good feedback. Mm. Uh, Greg is asking, so how do you feel like with so many photographers, you know, in the world, like, mm -hmm. how did you stand out? Like, do you have any advice, you know, if uh, we have uh, people watching, they want to, to jump into the photography world, or maybe they are already photographers, what would be your recommendation to, yeah, just to stand out? Yeah, well, I would say, um, for me, in my own work, I'm really trying to evolve and push my work to stand out more and more, too, and um, I think that, for me, um, what I found is that the more that I focus on stories that I, I find important and that I believe in and are um, uh, have a story behind them, uh, the the more that people resonate with them and the more that I myself resonate with the story. So it's really about story, I think. You know, I, I think first and foremost, learn your technical skills as best as you can so that when you're out in the field, when you're out in the world and you're photographing, you can create the images that you, um, that you imagine um, and you can create those in camera. But the next most important thing is then really thinking of the narrative. How can you push the story um, and what's the meaning and the why behind each picture you take? <laughs> so when was it? 
Um, so this was, uh, the series was about four or five years ago. Okay, so it was one of your first uh, yeah. big uh, series. Ar around this subject. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, uh, say thank you for the answer. Um, yeah, and so, uh, so now currently um, I'm focused on telling more stories like these and I'm really focusing on communities, especially, especially coastal communities that are being or will be affected by climate change. Um, so that's what most of my recent projects are focused on. Um, but in addition to that, a lot of my documentary work, um, some of it is self-funded, um, and to balance that, I also take on commissions. Um, and so I've done you know, commissioned work, such as uh, shooting for the NBA with so uh, how Stephen did the, Curry. How did it happen? Oh, because so when you get your previous series and then this one, you're like, wow. It, yeah, so um, it does feel all over the place in terms of subject in, in that way. And the way that this uh, opportunity came up is I, um, I directed a short series for Levi's a few years ago because, again, I do a lot of commercial work in film um, and photography. Um, and uh, one of the people who was working on that project oh, reached out. Thought about you. Yeah. And so it's, um, you know, really putting yourself out there, taking as many projects as you can and uh, doing the best work you can and building the best connections you can. Um, there's some photos from that. Um, How much time did you have uh, with uh, Stephen Curry? Oh, so this is over. Uh, these are I, I worked with him a few times. Um, so oh, okay. these are from different shoot days, but each time was very brief. Yeah, um, I guess you have someone to be like very him prepared. is so busy, yeah. and so that's what um, I was thinking. That's another um, tip I would have is that just the more you can get your technical skills down and um, uh, really be able to capture images and camera, the more prepared you are to take on projects where it's very run and gun. Um, Pedro is asking, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Oh, that's a great question. Um, are you more attracted by uh, uh, film direction or maybe something else? Or yeah, or I writing a book? I mean, I don't know. Oh, well, so currently I'm, I'm really focused on um, evolving as a director and a documentary director and I think I'll always balance photography and filmmaking but um, I, I'd like to do more and more feature documentaries. Um, so After Antarctica is my first feature documentary um, of the scale and I'd love to continue telling stories like this and specifically the yeah, we need to stop by the Mac yeah. store. Okay? <laughs> Don't forget. Um, and Hector is a, he wants uh, you to share about your hardest work. My so, hardest work. So, yeah, what, what would be the defini definition of a hard work? You know? Hard work. Um, or maybe the most challenging one. Yeah, yeah so. Um, I would say my current project, the After Antarctica project, uh, is I the guess. most challenging because it's um, it's my first feature documentary of the scale, and also um, I've chosen to take on a subject that is so expansive, yeah. and um, so that has been the most challenging, but also the most rewarding. Um, I found that with a lot of the projects I've done that have felt like the hardest or the most difficult, they've turned out to be the ones that I'm most passionate about. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I saw a lot of people in the chat mentioning uh, film festivals, like the True Falls Film Festival. Yes. Uh, you um, also apparently received an email from someone in the UK. Oh, great. Wants to be in touch with you to feature a movie. So oh, awesome. That's good. Cool. Uh, is your opinion has been the toughest subject to cover? Oh, um, that's a good question too. Um, I think so. Um, I'm in the process of rearranging my website, okay. so um, this isn't the full story that I was going to go into, but I've done a lot of documentary work in Southeast Asia, um, and, uh, and one uh, difficult subject to cover is just on um, uh, food scarcity in Southeast Asia, especially along the Burma border, uh, Myanmar border. Um, 
so that was one of the most difficult subjects to cover, and I have some of those images in here um, somewhere. I'll update it, and then, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, we're questions? still live with oh. Tasha. And uh, film, film festivals. So yeah. that's definitely a goal is um, after we finish the final cut of the film, will be um, the process is to submit to film festivals and then hopefully secure distribution okay. if we don't have it ahead of time. Oh, yeah, so you submit it to the film festival so mm -hmm. distributors can watch yes. it and yes. then they contact you to say, okay, I want to distribute this movie in France or yes. like, okay. Um, this is we, the process. Yes, we are in the process of meeting with several different production companies right now. So that's another angle too, is you can get a distributor and a production company on all at once. But um, another option is to go the film festival route. Okay, they are asking now, David and Benjamin, what is your go-to lens if you have one? Oh, yes. A lens you're very um, attached to. So I love the 50 millimeter 1.2. Um, I use all Canon L series uh, glass and. I, you know, I use everything from the 16 to 35, the 24 yeah. to 70, 70 to 200, um, all of the ranges. Uh, but um, when I have the flexibility to use a prime, I love using prime lenses. The 15 millimeter, 50 millimeter, and the 35 millimeter are great um, because they really um, replicate what the eye sees. Okay. And there's a constraint about prime lenses that I really like because it helps me. Um, the constraint of that helps me get more creative in how I approach a subject, approach a scene. Yeah. Um, makes me feel like I have yeah. to move around, which um, I, I generally like active. those photographs the best. Okay, thank you, Tasha. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, everyone. Make sure to. What is the best way to follow you, your work, engage with you on social? Sure. So um, you can follow me on Instagram at Tasha Van Zant. Mm -hmm. um, you can also head to TashaVanZant.com and. Click on my contact page if you want to get in touch. And I'm always looking to collaborate and happy to answer any questions. Yeah, make sure to follow Tasha and uh, to follow the After Antarctica story. It's very exciting. Thank you. Do you have a release date in mind? Just uh, oh, that's what do you target? Um, we're, our goal is sometime in the next year and a half. Oh, okay. To so 2018 or maybe first half 2019. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. We will still be live from Adobe Max. We will welcome in about uh, five minutes. Uh, two Adobe employees, so this is not usual, but they were on stage yesterday uh, during the day one keynote. I don't know oh, if you had okay, the opportunity yes, to watch it. Yeah. Uh, they did uh, one of the first demos using Illustrator, the Puppet Wrap, and also they use Photoshop, yeah. Photoshop Sketch, so all the new design tools. And uh, we wanted to give them an opportunity to do the demo again, but it will be more interactive. So you can ask them all the questions you need. They are awesome designers working for Adobe. And uh, yeah, it should be uh, very interactive and very fun. Uh, thanks again, Tasha. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Stay live with us. We will be back on behance.net slash live in about five minutes. Bye, everyone. Bye.